Hey, welcome to Rock Talk with Jackie Neal. I'm going to be talking with all kinds of entertainers, musicians, artists, comedians, singers, songwriters, bands about their life, their career, their inspirations, their philosophies. I'd love for you to subscribe, like, and leave us a review. Today, we are talking with Jim Kerr of Simple Minds. They have a new album out, their 18th studio album, Direction of the Heart, and it is available on simpleminds.com, Amazon, and iTunes. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Jackie. Nice to talk to you. You too. Thank you so much. And I am so excited about the new album out today, Direction of the Heart. Jim, your voice is as clean and clear as it ever was, and that beautiful, comforting tone. And I love what I've heard so far. Since it's out today, I'm downloading the entire album when we finish this interview. But, you know, I think it just encapsulates and expands on over 45 years of music making, living, and the flavor of Glasgow, Hamburg, and Sicily. It also brings that heartwarming nostalgia of that Simple Mind sound. I think iconic is a word that is so overused now, but it absolutely fits. But I love the fresh take as well. Can you expand on that for us and how that all weaves into the tracks of the album? Well, before I get to that, I just want to say thanks to you. Thank you for that group, for all those great words. And certainly, if that's the effect the record's had on you, it looks like we might have hit the target because <laughs> many of the things that you picked up on there is exactly what we wanted to achieve. You know, we wanted to put out a record where you could kind of feel the history of Simple Minds in it, um, the journey we've been on. And I think, uh, I think um, hopefully these songs, you know, we, we, we go way back with some of these, these sounds. There's a, there's a sweet spot where you can kind of hopefully conjure up the ghosts of the past, but bring and I say this, hopefully again, bring the kind of experience, the sensibilities that we have now that we're a little bit longer in the tooth. <laughs> I totally relate to that. Now, I love the videos, especially on First You Jump. And then I was looking on your website and just walking around the hotel with Mount Etna in the background. And it seems like kind of the theme of the music, especially First You Jump, that, you know, that's our lives. It's such a parallel that life is beautiful and dangerous and always changing. And that uncertainty of it could blow at any minute. Well, you know, it's a big thing these days. When I grew up, I didn't really hear much about the term anxiety, but it's there's no getting away from it. Yeah. These are anxious times, and people do have anxieties about all manner of things. So that was a song kind of offering, and, and we're being poetic, but we were sort of saying, you know, don't be afraid, jump in, you know, confront your fear. It won't be as bad as you think. What do I know? I just use the experience I've had in my life. Well, and I love the line, first you jump, then get wings. I just love that because so many times we have to just step out and that fear of falling, but a lot of times we do get the wings and rise higher. That's right. And, you know, all that stuff. So, I mean, we found out in our own life, same with people who, you know, they maybe have a passion for something. Don't, um, I don't think I can achieve this. I don't. I can just tell you, if you have something in your life that you love, and don't hold back. Go for it. You'll, if you really go for it, chances are you'll find that doors open easier than you think. Can we talk about Vision Thing, the other single that was out before the album came out? I love the hopeful yep. melancholy tone. Just talk about writing that at your childhood home in Glasgow. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the you know, the funny thing, we, we when we started writing the record, it was pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and we were working in Glasgow, as you quite rightly see. I was near Dad's house. My father's, you know, he's a typical Glasgow guy, construction worker and all that stuff. Um, he didn't understand way back when I was leaving school that this is what I wanted to do. But nevertheless, he gave us the first hundred pounds to mm-hmm. make our demo tapes, which I then hitchhiked to London and went round the record companies and miraculously managed to hustle a record deal. Now, Dad, till his dying day, always said, when am I getting my hundred pounds back? <laughs> and I would say, well, you know, not today, but uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, um, well, <laughs> you know, it was time to write a song praising. At the, when we were kids, we didn't appreciate them, but it, it was time to write a song praising the people that raised us. And their teachers, all that, they gave us the tools to negotiate uh, our way through life. And and the song is in praise of 
all of those people. I love that it kind of brings that nostalgia. I think we all can go back to that time when we're teenagers and our dad shouting, turn that music down. But then also the yeah. sadness of the present and the inevitability of our mortality, because that was absolutely happening during this time with your father. Yeah, it was. It became clear early on in that dad was seriously ill and you know we were distraught about that um, because I, Charlie my songwriting partner he grew up with dad as well we grew up in the same street but the one thing just to carry my dad well you're not hanging around here get back to work <laughs> so we went back to work we would work during during the afternoons and go up and see him at night and stuff but yeah it, and that's what I like about that song it's energetic it's upbeat but Let's say metaphorically, there's something there's something autumnal about it. Mm-hmm. There is a sadness in it as well. There is a melancholy, but somehow also a feeling of celebration. How can it be both? I don't know, but it seems that's the mystery of music. Well, and I think the way your music encapsulates our lives. I mean, we live with hopeful melancholy because we have hope, but then sad, tragic things happen. That's just part of life. That's part of it. We couldn't feel more lucky than we do. We wanted the life and music when we were 18, 19, starting out. All we wanted was to write songs and play songs and try and get a life out of this thing. And here we are, all these years later, still just about getting away with it. Well, and I saw that you played... Sicily, you know, that was, of course, during 2020, everybody got stopped down, and your 40th anniversary tour sure did. Do you have any U.S. dates that y'all are thinking about? Oh, yes. They're speaking right now, promoter agents, and nothing would make us happier. Me too, Jim. I did read that you said among the top 10 things that changed your life, two of them were meeting Charlie and your ex-wife, Chrissy Hind, of The Pretenders. Can we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. Uh, my relationship with Charlie lasted a little longer than I did with Chrissy. <laughs> but, but that's not to say that every moment wasn't beautiful. Yeah. Um, uh, now, the funny thing is, Chrissy, well, what an artist. I'm still a fan. What a great, great artist. And what a great being, too. Um, the thing we have in common now is that not only do we have kids, we have uh, grandkids. Mm-hmm. So um, we're we're still in touch. We still we still um, you know we were young. I was naive. She was the last person I should have married. <laughs> but she's just the greatest. Well, it sounds like y'all have a beautiful relationship now. And yes, I think a lot of us can relate to that experience, Jim, of the yes. last person you should have married. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. The new album, of course, Direction of the Heart, it is out today. And I did see that there's a deluxe version available. Well, yeah, you know what it's like now, marketing. There's even one available in cassette. Can you believe that? I love that little throwback. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, does it mean you've got to have a pen to try and rewind all the tape in again? Remember when you used to do that? Or that number two lead pencil. You yeah. Pen. <laughs> yeah, did you get a number two lead pencil with a cassette? Because if you don't, I would, I would want my money back. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking back on your musical history and experience and your life, can you tell us what is maybe something that your fans don't know about you and and or the band, but that maybe, Jim, you want them to? Um, what would I like them to know? Let me think. Um, well, I, 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 you know, we, we do put our story out there. I think people have got a good idea of what we're like. Let me think right now. I'm quite a decent cook, actually. You know, really? all the years that I've spent in Italy, I've, I've managed to get in the kitchen there and see how a lot of things are done. So I don't know if people would expect that of me, but I'm pretty good at that. What else do I love to do? I'm a hiker. I love going hiking. Oh. I love going into the wilderness for days. It's a perfect antidote to, uh, you know, when you're on tour and all that chaos and all that noise, just go away for a few days and kind of um, quiet. tune in to yourself. Now, what is the longest you've been out hiking by yourself? Well, there was this, um, um, it might be an exaggeration to say I was myself because I was a guide hanging around the background, but I once did this 10-day desert oh. thing in the Middle East. 
Jordan and all that, and to sleep out under the desert skies were really something. And I want to know real quick, what is your favorite dish to make? Well, I'm really good. I'm really good with all those pastas. I mean, <laughs> anyone can do that. But but the sauces, you got to get the sauces right. That's the key. Thank you so much for your time. I know there's a lot of other people waiting for you. Direction of the Heart out today on Amazon, simpleminds.com, and iTunes. It has been delightful speaking with you, Jim. Thank you so much. Lovely, lovely. Thanks for talking to me. All the best. Bye-bye, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Rock Talk with Jackie Neal.